Welcome to the inaugural episode of Context Free. We're going to talk about programming languages, human languages, artificial intelligence, other cool stuff, primarily programming languages because programming languages are fun. So start out with what is the best programming language? Google has some ideas for us. Well, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Um, and maybe a slightly easier question is what's the most popular programming language? And maybe popular is correlated with better. Um, well, you decide. I don't know. Let's move on, though. Here's a list of programming languages. Programming is how, programming language is how you talk to a computer. Uh, we apparently find value in that. Lots of money in that, too, and lots of fun in that. Different people do it for different reasons. Uh, this is not all the programming languages in the world. And this is still too many for us to worry about at the moment. So... I want to answer the question of what's the most popular language. Hint, not so easy. Um, one place to start with is Toby. Uh, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. That's how I pronounce it. Uh, been around 15 years. I've looked at it since the, the early days. Um, they uh, look at search results from Google, Bing, Yahoo, Wikipedia, Amazon, YouTube, and Baidu to see what's popular. Um, I'm not so convinced they have the best answers, but at the top, they're still going to be approximately popular languages. Java, C, Python, C++, C Sharp, VB.net, JavaScript, SQL, PHP, Objective C. Anyway, moving on on the list here. Um, now, they change their methodology occasionally, and the search engines that they depend on also change the way they work occasionally. And independent of knowing exactly how they do it, because they don't release exactly their formulas, uh, we can see at least some of the problems with this method. So, for example, let's look at the language C here. C has been around for decades. It did not suddenly become less popular in 2017 and then become back to where it was before. This is an anomaly in their methods, not in the actual reality of the world. It did not suddenly become less popular for a year. Um, and we can discuss other things about their stuff later, but just an example of how not everything here is really uh, ideal. Um, Objective-C might be a little bit realistic, but we'll do that a different time. Um, another way to look at things, here we got popularity of programming language. Uh, these guys specifically say they come from Google Trends. We'll see some similar languages here. Python, Java, JavaScript, C -sharp, C Sharp, PHP, C, C++, R. Um, these are, C and C++ are not the same language, but hey, we go with what we go. Uh, just like with Toby, they will uh, list what comes more or less popular, how do they change in rankings over time compared to a year ago, so Kotlin has come up like crazy. There's a reason for that. Um, different time to discuss that, though. They uh, like to argue the reason why they care about trends is they want to see velocity. What's your, what are people paying attention to right now, not what's the total amount of stuff out there, which has a lot of um, uh, inertia over time. And so their argument is that Toby, uh, because it's dealing with the total amount of web pages, which may or may not be what Toby does, but maybe, that it uh, has a lot of inertia. It doesn't uh, keep up with the times as much. As far as Google Trends goes, we can look at that too. C++, Java, Python, JavaScript, PHP. I put these in manually because these are popular languages. So we look at them over time. Notice I have chosen specifically programming language because I could just search. Let's go edit. We could say C++ is a search term, but I specifically said programming language. How Google interprets this, I have no idea. But at least they're trying to pretend that we're looking at people who wanted to search for a C++ programming language as opposed to say Java, which could be referring to coffee or to Indonesia. Um, Java we have going down over time in popularity. The other sort of as well. Uh, JavaScript sort of flat right here. Python going up, and there's a reason why Python actually goes up in popularity recently. Let's discuss that a different time perhaps. Uh, another way to look at things, IEEE, Logical Engineering uh, Society uh, organization, uh, they are focused on engineers, so when they're listing uh, languages, they'll be biased toward that. Again, we see Python, Java, C, C++. We see R again. R is for statistics, which is useful for some engineering purposes. MATLAB is also a very uh, good mathematical language for doing matrix, matrices and other types of things, again, for engineers. So that influences why they show up here. Um, interestingly, they also have an interactive version that you can do where you can change the things you care about and see different language sort of scoring on these languages. Um, Stack Overflow, a very popular programming uh, help website, uh, does a survey every year. And instead of scrolling down, let's click through the links here. 
They list the most popular languages based on survey uh, respondents. JavaScript uh, includes markup languages like HTML, uh, not just programming languages. We have SQL, Python, you can say SQL, I usually say SQL, Python, Java, and others here that we've seen before. TypeScript, C, we see a big gap after C, which is interesting, or to Ruby or Go. Um, we also can see most loved, dreaded, and wanted. Uh, loved is the opposite of dreaded. So like, for example, in C++, loved is 52%. So dreaded will be 48%, just uh, one minus. Uh, Rust is interesting here. Wanted, by the way, is who wants to learn it? How many people want to learn this language? That's how much do they love using it or whatever. Fourth in a row, Rust is the most loved programming language among respondents, followed closely by Python, which is the fastest growing major language today. We saw that earlier on Google Trends. Um, so this is based on survey respondents, of people who uh, talk to their survey. Uh, Red Monk is interesting here. Uh, these guys also have an inertial type of thing. They look at uh, total, uh, uh, total counts of something, but not uh, based on search engines. In fact, they use Stack Overflow as part of their thing. So twice a year, they release this analysis, or I should say uh, Stephen O'Grady releases this analysis. And they have a two-dimensional view here. They have popularity on Stack Overflow by number of tags. This is not a Stack Overflow survey. It's just people's questions, how many are tagged with this language. There's a popularity rank on GitHub by number of projects. GitHub is a place where people do primarily open source, but you can also do uh, proprietary uh, uh, code storage uh, um, repository version control stuff there. Um, so, but a lot of open source projects are on GitHub these days. And so this is how many projects there are for this language. Um, some kinds of uh, languages might not show up on GitHub as much, and some kinds of languages might not show up on Stack Overflow questions as much. So we have two dimensions here. Uh, languages that are sort of evenly uh, biased toward each are going to be near the diagonal. And we see that very commonly for most of these uh, top tier languages, the most common ones, JavaScript, Java, PHP, Python, Kotlin again, Dart. Now this is interesting here. A lot of these languages we see in common between these different methods. I'm not going to talk about Dart at the moment, maybe a little bit later, Zeke. Uh, sorry, I had a question for my son there. We have, uh, this is a uh, viewing audience here. We're working and stuff and interactive. Anyway, so we have, they also list them out in terms of just numerical rankings. Um, anyway, so this is an interesting way of looking at things. And you'll see a similar strategy over here with uh, GitHub 2.0. Uh, I love this place. I presume it's also inertial. I presume that this is total numbers of projects or other total numbers of pull requests. This is, I don't know if this is uh, um, cumulative pull requests through this time. They update quarterly or just number of pull requests during this quarter. So I actually don't know if it's inertial or if it's cumulative. I'm really not entirely sure. Um, the fact that things change so much makes me guess that it's just for that quarter alone. Um, one of the cool things about GitHub, and this is just based entirely on statistics of things in GitHub itself, and GitHub provides means for you to query this stuff. That's how they pull this stuff out here. You can turn on and off different languages to see what happens. So, for example, if you want to look at a less popular language, you can get rid of these more uh, visible ones. So, like, you want to see TypeScript, for example. Ah, compared to Python, it's harder to see that stuff. Uh, but if we just want TypeScript alone, also, things like Rust. Where's Rust going? Rust does seem to be going up right now. Uh, interestingly, uh, and this is my son was asking about Dart here. Uh, Dart's a language which originally was sort of in a com competition with TypeScript in one uh, domain, and they lost in that domain. And they've been working on a different method now. I'm going to get into it later of how they want to apply and make use of their language. And it's becoming somewhat popular here. We'll discuss that on a different occasion. You can also count, though, by... And by the way, notice when every time I push this button, it resets the thing, which is not my favorite. I maybe should have submitted an issue to uh, GitHub, which is also on GitHub, uh, but it resets it to the top language under this category. So this number of pushes to the repository updates, opposed to previous one was pull requests, which is people uh, submitting uh, updates to people's uh, repositories. This is people just pushing changes to their own repositories. Um, Stars, this is like, I like this project, so I'm gonna click a star on it. I do this regularly. I go look at the top things on GitHub every day and I will uh, star the ones that I think are interesting. I don't know how they all get their stars, but these are all different ways of measuring popularity of languages. 
There's also a number of issues, which is like feature requests or bug reports. And supposedly things that get used more will have more issues associated. I don't know if this is open issues or just issues filed during the quarter. Again, I'm not sure entirely how the methodology works. But I love this site because it's updated quarterly and because they have a pretty good amount of history. And actually, I, I'm sort of biased for open source anyway, so I'd like to see how that works out. Notice again, a lot of the same language we saw before. However, you notice Go is really high up here on this one. Uh, we'll talk about Go sometime also. It's a very interesting language. Another way to look at things, is what do people find interesting? So this site, we'll definitely come see this site later. The Computer Language Benchmarks Game. They say game for a reason here. It's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, the point being that you can't take it all the way seriously. But again, different time for that. Point is, people submit programs in their programming language so they can compare them with other programming languages. So these are languages people cared about enough to bother writing up programs for competition in the Benchmarks Game. So these presumably are going to be popular languages of some sort or another. Fortran, Julia, Lisp, some things we haven't seen elsewhere. Racket, OCaml, that's how I usually pronounce it. Anyway, uh, these are presumably languages that people cared about enough to submit for, com uh, for comparing with other languages and their performance. Um, and one final way I want to look at for comparing programming languages is jobs. One reason why people program is because they want to make money. So what's more popular? So we can say like, you know, the reason why I come to Indeed, by the way, Indeed used to be awesome in the sense that they used to have a job trends where you could see uh, search like, you know, job listings over time that contain keywords. They removed that now, which I'm really sad about. Uh, but we can still see total hits. So like, for instance, Python we saw is a big one right now. How many hits do we have for Python? We have 76,000 job listings for Python. How many listings do we have for C++? 42,000. Okay. And uh, we can see like how many for JavaScript or just even Java. How about Java? Um, 73,000. That's pretty high around where the Python was. And probably most Java job listings are actually referring to the Java programming language, but I'm not sure they really distinguish here. So worth keeping that in mind. So if you want to see what's a popular language in terms of what, all these things are in terms of what. So I'm not sure I can tell you what's the most popular programming language, let alone what's the best programming language. Uh, but these are things I love to look at. I love to keep up with the stuff. Some people watch sports teams. Some people watch programming languages. And I, I, I think sports are fun, but programming languages are more fun. Anyway, uh, what's best for you? And I'm out. See, uh, see you all next time.